All right, now this is the screen we're going to be met with when the vehicle's first turned on. Now this vehicle does have the Copilot 360 Plus package, which the big thing that's going to give us is going to be factory navigation as well as adaptive cruise control. So this is the way that the screen's going to look like with that package. It's going to look slightly tweaked if you don't have the factory navigation going. Now a couple things to point out, we do have a hotkey in order to, we can literally just press this in order to get our get into our factory navigation. We can turn the audio on or off either there or by pressing this button. So that bang on the left and sound system, really, really nice. We've got the ability to easily add a phone there as well. So we'll get to that one in just a second, but let's start off with some basic audio settings. So basic audio, we've got the ability to change sources between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, Bluetooth, stereo. So if we had a Bluetooth MP3 player, our cell phone, things like that connected, it would show up there. Moving back, we can direct tune a few different ways. So we can either type in a radio station if we want to change it and enter. As you can see, we've changed stations and we can tune that way. There's a tuning knob there, or we also have the option to use our voice by pressing a button on the steering wheel. Now, a couple other things to point out. If you ever want to save a station that you've tuned to, all we have to do is press and hold and that will save. Now that's going to be the same. So we, as you can see there, we've got a mix of AM, FM, Sirius, XM. So you can do a little bit of a mix and match there. Now, as we start to move down, adding a phone to the vehicle, a very, very, very straightforward process. Step number one, all we're going to do is press add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so very straightforward there. Now on your cell phone, all you're going to do is make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. And from there, watch what happens in a few seconds there. And as you can see, sync has shown up. So we're just going to press that and watch what Confirm happens. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, there we go. So we just want to make sure that the numbers match up, which in this case they do. So on the phone, I'm going to hit pair. And then on the screen, I'm going to hit yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Hey, there we go. Now, a couple things back on the screen for a second there on my phone. It's asking me if I want to allow my contacts and favorites to sync. I absolutely want to make sure that I do that. I'm connecting my phone so that I can make phone calls and things like that. So you're just going to hit allow on your phone there. Now, a couple things come up on the screen. 911 Assist, I always recommend turning that one on. And the big reason why is because if you're ever in an accident with your phone connected, it will automatically dial 911 for you. So definitely recommend keeping that one enabled. From there, we've also got the ability to automatically download our contacts when the phone's connected. We absolutely want to make sure that we do that. And just hit finish. And there we go. That's it. As you can see there, we can look at my recent calls, contacts, go to my phone. If you have multiple phones connected, you've got the ability to easily change. We can go do not disturb, etc. Now, a couple of things to point out. If we jump back to audio for a second, we've now got my phone or we can run off of any installed radio app. So I've got Live X Live. If you had Spotify, things like that, you'd be able to use that as an entertainment source. Under app, same thing. We've got that radio app that's shown up. And in order to be able to easily remove a phone, very straightforward. So as we saw there, so we went to settings, phone, and now we can either view devices, we can look at my text messaging options there, roaming warnings, etc. But if I go view devices, we've got all of the available connected devices. By clicking on it, we can either disconnect or we can fully remove, remove the phone. And as you can see, it's now disconnected. Jumping back in a phone, we have now disconnected. So it's really that simple. Using navigation inside of the Bronco Sport is also a very straightforward process. So all we're going to do is hit the nav button there. And then as you can see, we've got this nice, beautiful display. In order to be able to navigate to an address, we're just going to start typing. Now it will auto complete as well. So we can just start typing and then it'll automatically complete the address for us. So you can see it's got the address there. So we're just going to click. We can either save it as a favorite or just start the navigation route. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. Okay, so we've set our route up. Now we can do a couple of things. We can either cancel the voice guidance. We can cancel the route completely. Very straightforward there. And by going to the menu button. So let's go there for a second. We can change out our screen view, look at traffic lists, navigation settings. So map preferences, we've got the ability to look at 3D city modeling, breadcrumbs. If we had breadcrumbs enabled, and if we're taking a route, what would happen on the nav screen is we'd see a series of little dots based off of a route that we've taken. So really useful if you're going off-roading and you're not 100% sure where you're going. From there, we've got our point of interest icons. That's going to give you the ability to see what gas stations and coffee shops are nearby. 
Moving into our route preferences, we can choose between either the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route, and we've got a series of other preferences as well. Now one thing to point out is whatever preferences you have there, it'll dynamically update the navigation for you. So if you don't like to go on freeways, toll roads, etc., select those preferences and it'll build you a route based off of what you do and don't like. The last one is going to be our navigation preferences. So we've got different prompts. We've got our voice and tones, our voice or just the tone. And that's when you've got an upcoming turn. So voice and tone would say turning in 200 meters with a beep. You can have it just so that it's telling you to turn or it's just a tone letting you know that you're going to be coming up to an upcoming turn basics of the navigation. We've got the ability to look at where am I, search, our history, so addresses we've already gone to, our favorites, our point of interest, and then the other two big ones are our home or our work address. One of the big benefits of setting up your home and work address is that we can press the hotkey on the steering wheel for our voice and we can just say navigate home and it'll automatically set up our route to either our home or our work address. It's a really, really useful feature there. And that's going to be the basics of the factory navigation. When it comes down to the app screen, we've got the ability to add a device. We can find mobile apps, and there are some Series XM travel apps that will work directly through this middle screen as well. Moving into our basic settings. So this is where we get into a lot of the added settings of the vehicle. Firstly, let's start off with our sound settings. So our treble, mid-range, bass, and balance, number of options there. We can just go back. From there, we've got our clock settings. So we can get to our clock settings two different ways. We can go settings to the clock, or we can just press the clock time at the top. And as you can see there, we can now change between hours. So up and down an hour, up and down a minute. We can change between AM or PM, or switch between the 12 hours of so the military time or our traditional 12 hour time instead. Automatic daylight, daylight savings time, that's automatically going to either spring us forward or fall us back an hour, depending on the time of year. And then our auto time zone update. When we're driving to the East Coast, the West Coast, whatever the case may be, we get into different time zones. So with this enabled, it's automatically going to adjust our time based off of the GPS location of the vehicle. As we get into, let's look at our Bluetooth settings. So we can now either turn Bluetooth off or we can add a Bluetooth enabled device. Moving back, we've now got Search our phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. That's where we would go in order to add a device. We can also just go to the phone setting along the bottom. Now this button here, the radio button is actually dynamic based off of whether you're on Sirius XM or your regular radio. So looking there, we've got our radio text and then our preset pages. Now preset pages, so right now as a default, you're only going to have two. I always recommend maxing it out, going to six preset pages, and I'll show you why in just a sec. It'll update in three, two, one, perfect. Audio, as you can see there, we've now got six different pages of presets, so we can have up to 30 individually saved stations there. Now watch what happens when I change out it to Sirius XM instead, and then go back to my settings. So it's went gone from radio to Sirius XM. Now when we click on that, as you can see, we have a number of different options. Preset pages, it's going to be the same for Sirius XM or AM FM, so we'll always leave that at six. We've got the ability to seek different categories, parental locks, tune start. We've got so many different options there. So if you're a heavy Sirius XM user, knowing that you've got the capability to change out some settings, all you have to do is make sure in your audio that you are actually on Sirius XM for your radio source. Jumping back into settings again, we've got some more advanced driver assistance settings. This is where we have a ton of different options. Firstly, different options for cruise control. Now this thing does have the outer banks, or sorry, the Copilot 360 plus package, I should say, which does have the adaptive cruise control. With that package, we've got the normal adaptive and intelligent. If you didn't have the Copilot 360 plus, you just have normal cruise control. The adaptive cruise is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control. So let's say if you set it to 120 on the highway, car in front of you slows down, down, yours will automatically break. If they speed up or get out of the way, yours will pick right back up to speed again, which is really, really nice. Intelligent Cruise Control takes the adaptive to the next level. So the intelligent is based off of having a tolerance level set as well. So let's say if we set our tolerance level to five kilometers an hour, and let's say if we're on a road that's 60 kilometers an hour, We've got it set for 60 kilometers an hour and all of a sudden the speed drops to 50. What's going to happen is with the intelligent cruise control, the vehicle is automatically going to slow us down to whatever our tolerance level is over the posted speed limit. So really, really beneficial to have that system going there. From there, we've got pre-collision, oh, sorry, lane keeping system. So lane keeping system works three different ways. First way is it's going to be a little bit of a steering wheel shake. So if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, you'll get a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if you're running over a rumble pavement. The aid, if you start to go over into a lane without signaling, the steering wheel will actually take over and it'll pull you and recenter you back into your lane. 
the alert and the aid will do both. So it'll give you a little bit of a shake on the steering wheel, but it's also going to recenter you and pull you back into your lane. From there, the alert intensity is the intensity of the steering wheel shake, high, normal, or low setting. Moving back, we've got our pre-collision assist, a really, really useful feature. I love that Ford's including this in all of their vehicles now. You can turn it off if you really don't like it, but one of the benefits is if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's going to pre-charge the brakes and actively brake for you in, either, in order to either avoid or minimize the impact of the collision. And then we also have the option for evasive steering, so if braking isn't enough, it'll actually take over the steering wheel and pull you out of the way of a potential collision. And then how sensitive is it as well? From there, we've got our speed sign recognition. So that's going to be something on the steer, just above the steering wheel cluster there. So let's us know what the posted speed is on the local road we're on. And that actually also gives you the option for a speed warning. So speed warning with a tolerance, the same thing. So if the posted speed is 50 kilometers an hour, you're going 55 kilometers an hour with a tolerance of five set. If you've got this on, you'll get a chime letting you know that you're speeding. So useful, especially if you have younger drivers. From there, we've got our rear camera, so rear view camera. Now this one is equipped with the reverse sensing system. Now the enhanced park aid is this that we've got along the side there. So as you can see there, whether or not that shows up, really a matter of preference, but I absolutely recommend keeping it on because when we're backing up, let me show you there. So when we're backing up there, as you can see, we do have that enhanced park aid there, and that's going to beep out at us as we start to get closer to an obstacle behind us. From there, as we start to move down a little bit more, we've got our blind spot system. So blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Watch the side view mirror for a second there. So I'm just going to toggle that, so as you can see there, so highlighting orange there. So that lets us know if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So very, very useful feature to have. As we start to move back, we've now got the trailer sway control. Trailer sway control, what that's going to do is if the vehicle senses that your trailer is swaying, it's automatically going to apply braking to the engine in order to try to get that trailer sway under control. The parking aid is that beeping that we get as we start to get closer to an obstacle behind us. We've got the ability to easily turn that off. Cross traffic alert. If a vehicle is coming perpendicular to the left or to the right of the vehicle, it's going to give us a warning letting us know of a potential collision. You can turn that one on if you don't like it. From there, we've got our driver alert. Driver alert is going to be tied into the lane keeping system. So if we get too many alerts letting us know that we're going into a lane without signaling, it'll tell us that we should probably take a break. From there, we've got the ability to easily turn off traction control. Next up, we've got some basic vehicle settings. So we've got the ability to have a 30 minute max idle. Keep that one on because if you idle for longer than that, you don't wanna be chewing through gas unnecessarily. Rear occupant alert is a really, really neat one. What happens when the vehicle is turned off? Let's, let me show you how that works. Love the fact that we've got that rear occupancy alert. It's a very simple message, but it does let us know to make sure that we check to make sure that there's nobody in that back seat. So it's a super useful system, especially if you have young kids. So I love the fact that Ford's introduced this into their vehicles. My key gives you the ability to set up certain limitations for individual key fobs. So if you're lending the, your vehicle out to a child, or if you want to play a prank on your spouse, you can set certain limitations on each individual key fob. And that would be things like the vehicle can only go up to a certain speed. Or maybe the radio can't turn on until the seatbelt's plugged in. So there are a lot of options there. We've got our serial number remote start setup so the vehicle you can remote start through the fob or through the ford pass app now it's very very straightforward so we can either we can completely disable remote start if we want to but what happens when we get remote started is it going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be is it going to be based off of our last settings our seats and steering wheel do we want to have the heated seats and the heated steering wheel come on automatically or have it off again let's let the vehicle decide and from there the duration of the remote start is it going to last for 5 10 or 15 minutes as we start to move down, we've got our window setting now. So remote open or remote close. So yeah, you've got the ability to use your key fob in order to be able to open and close the windows in this Bronco Sport. Let's hop outside to see how that's done. In order to be able to use the key fob to roll the windows down, it's a very straightforward process. So all we're going to do is press that lock button twice. On the second press, you're just going to hold. So one, two, and hold. Amazing! Now, in order to be able to roll the windows back up, we're just going to press the lock button twice. Same thing on that second press we're gonna hold.
back up again. So I love the fact that they have included this feature inside of the Bronco Sport. Love it, love the fact that we've got the capabilities to do that directly through our fob. Jumping back, we've also got some ambient light. So ambient light is going to be the brightness inside of the vehicle there. So they unfortunately don't have the ability to change colors like you do in the Badlands, but at the same time, it still kind of does look pretty cool. From there, we've got our wipers and we've got a couple different options there. Should be, yeah, courtesy wipe, rain sensing wipers. So this thing is equipped with rain sensing wipers because of the package options that it's got. Rain sensing wipers is automatically going to turn the wipers on if it senses rain hitting the windshield. Now, one of the nice things is that when the wipers are on, it's automatically going to flip on the rear wiper when you put the car into reverse, as long as this setting is active. So definitely let's keep that one on. We've also got some basic lighting, so auto high beam. The vehicle is automatically going to adjust the high beams as necessary. So if you're driving on a dark road, it'll automatically flip the high beams on for you. And as the vehicle senses an oncoming vehicle, it'll automatically dim them before turning those lights off completely. So really, really useful. From there, we've got an auto lamp delay. So when we actually turn the vehicle off, when we go to lock, do our lamps stay on for 10, 20, or 120 seconds, or do they just go off right away? Moving down, we've also got basics for our locks. So auto unlock, miss lock, switch inhibitor, etc. Now, a lot of these have to do with what happens when the fob leaves the vehicle. So if your vehicle's on and you leave, you're going to get a notice and you're going to get an audible beep letting you know that the vehicle's still on. From there, auto unlock. If the vehicle senses that the key fob is closed, it'll automatically unlock the doors when you go to push, open up the door there. And then other things like the miss lock chirps. So let's say if one of the doors isn't completely shut and you go to lock it, you'll get a double horn letting you know that there's something not right when you were trying to lock. When we go to remote unlock the vehicle, do all doors become unlocked or is it just going to be the driver's door? So if you want added security, definitely just go driver's door there and back. From there, last one is going to be our intelligent access. I think that is, oh, last one, door keypad code. So the vehicle itself is equipped with a five digit factory number that we can use in order to get remote access to the vehicle if we don't have the fob. All you'd have to do is enter in that five digit number. You can set as many of these things as you'd like though, which is really, really nice. Now the actual five digit number there, let's look on the outside of the vehicle for a second, is going to be this right here. So that's going to go away just depending on, well, I mean, if you walk away from the vehicle, the vehicle's off, etc. these won't be there, but it's really useful to have, especially if you don't have your key fob on you and you need to get inside of the vehicle. Okay, and back from there. And that is the basics of the vehicle settings. Okay, next up, Ford Pass Connect. So the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, and if you have a if you have a plan directly through a cell phone provider for a data only plan, you can use it as a wireless hotspot for up to ten devices, which is really really neat. Now, on top of that, you can do things such as remote start the vehicle. You can roll up and down the windows, etc., directly through your cell phone. Moving back. We've also got some basic general settings. So we can change between English, Spanish, or French, so whatever language of preference, Celsius and Fahrenheit, liters per hundred or miles per gallon, different tire pressure. Now there's beeping that we're getting. That beeping, so we can turn it off if you're not a fan of the beep there. Last big one to point out is going to be the reset. So if for whatever reason the Sync 3 screen is giving you troubles, all you have to do is just do a reset on it, and that's just going to bring you back to factory defaults. If you've got an issue with your Ford Pass Connect app, you can just go Ford Pass Reset, and same thing, that'll just bring you back to factory defaults there as well. From there, we've got Wi-Fi and automatic updates, which are tied together. So I do recommend connecting to Wi-Fi at home. And the reason why is because with automatic updates enabled, it's automatically going to update the firmware for the vehicle for you. So really, really useful, really, really beneficial, making sure that you have that set up. Last one there, or next one there, I should say, is going to be our 911 assist, which we did cover off when we connected our phone. 911 assist, if the vehicle senses a collision, will automatically dial 911 for you if your cell phone's connected. So absolutely always recommend making sure that you're driving with your phone connected to the vehicle with that setting turned on. From there, we've got some basic mobile apps and the ability to have different settings there basic display settings. So as nice and beautiful as this display is, for some people it might be a little bit much. So we've got the ability to either press the button there or there's a hotkey, we'll get to that in a second. We can either turn the display completely off, press to turn it back on, or we can have it in a calming screen with just the time and the date instead. Same thing, one button press in order to bring it back to life. 
Jumping back to our display, we can change the background if we want to, change the brightness, and we can also change the mode. So right now we're looking at the daytime mode. I want you to look at the nighttime for a second because I love the look of it because of this. It's blue, it's bright, it's beautiful. I love the look of it. I would keep this in the nighttime mode all the time. But maybe you like the daytime mode when you're in auto. The vehicle is going to automatically flip you between the daytime or the nighttime mode depending on how bright it is outside. Perfect, there we go. And as we start to move over, we've got our voice control. So there are a couple things that we can do with the vehicle. We've got a basic advanced mode, which I want you to take a listen for a second. 97.7. Tuning to FM 97.7. Okay, so let's jump back to the audio section for a second. So it's changed the radio station for us, but with the advanced mode on, let's try that again. 94.9. Okay, we didn't get a message there, but look at this. It's changed the radio station for us. So by having the advanced mode on, we just won't get as many prompts. So I definitely recommend keeping and turning that one on. Phone confirmation, when you're making a phone call, would you like to call such and such person? Yes, make sure you do that. And then our voice command list. When we press the steering wheel button there, this is the command list. So we have a number of different things. We've got the ability to look at different commands, etc. but you can hide that command list completely just by toggling that switch off. From there, we've also got our valet mode, which with valet mode enabled, you can enter in a four digit number in order to lock out the screen. So one, two, three, four. Don't use one, two, three, four. Use something more challenging, but look what's happened. It's completely locked the screen out. So we can't actually get back into it until we enter that four digit number again and go to unlock. So really, really useful feature to have. Just make sure you remember that four digit number. Last one is going to be our navigation settings, which we already covered off when we looked at the navigation there.